there. So let's um, see if we can get this working. Um, it's been a little while since I've recorded anything. So you might see there is way shorter. Uh, still a pandemic. So that's an experience. But um, let's kind of just see how we form we get. Because I am fairly out of practice, which is both lovely and not great. But yeah, okay, cool. Hello, testing, 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 testing. I clearly I'm just drawing this out. Ethics is what we're talking about today. Very exciting, I know. But frankly, if I don't talk about it, I'd be doing a disservice to it because all the cool tools that we have learned so far are useful, but also dangerous. And with great power comes great responsibility if we want to be cheesy. So let's, let's kind of start because I could go on and on and on, but let's start with misrepresentation. That's kind of the easy, straightforward one and how it relates to causality. So here we have a great New York Times title. It says exercise can lower risk of some cancers by 20%. And people who were more active had on average a 20% lower risk of cancers um, of the esophagus, lung, kidney, stomach, endometrium, and others compared to people who were less active. That sounds pretty compelling. 20%, that's a lot. And in this language here, it says exercise is causing those things in the headline. Now, if you look at the language there, it's a little, a little less causing. Uh, here's another headline. Exercising drives down risk of for 13 cancers, research shows. That suggests a very causal direction. Those who had moderate to intense exercise reduced their risk of developing severe cancer by at least 20%. These are, these are really compelling arguments for exercise. But why am I telling you this? Well, let's look at the original study. Uh, looking at this great JAMA article on the association of leisure time physical activities with risk of 26 kinds of cancer in 1.44 million adults. It's a really clear title. You know what's happening, but it seems a little different from the Times headline. Uh, volunteers were asked about their physical activity level over the preceding year. Half exercised less than 150 minutes per week, half exercised more, the median, if you will. And if you compared the bottom 10% of exercisers to the top 10% of exercisers, they had lower rates of esophageal, esophagus, uh, liver, endometrial, colon, and breast cancer. But for the other 13, Researchers found no association between exercising and 13 other cancers, including pancreatic, um, ovarian, brain, etc. Hmm. That seems pretty different from what those headlines said. They only mentioned the 13 cancers and made it seem like increasing exercise led to those results. That's a pretty strange plane. Sorry, I'm squeaking. So that's one fun example. Let's talk about another one with axes and scale. Here, what's the difference between these two pictures? Which presents a better way to represent these data? Well, that's a good question. Better in what sense? So in the first one, we've got now to January 2013. One of these looks much more compelling if you want to keep the tax cuts. We can look at now, this one on the that side. On whichever side my mouse is, 35 to 40. And in this plot, that looks huge. But we just take a little, little look over here and see where the axes are. One of them starts at 34 and the other starts at, or at zero. Hmm. These same data, one is much more compelling 
if you want to let the tax cuts expire versus if you want to keep them. What about this one? So here's a Fox News screenshot of the cost of gas. Last year, according to this data, it was a uh, $3.17 a gallon. Last week, it was 3.5. And currently, it's 3.57. Ooh, scandalous. What's the problem here? Audience participation points. Well, I kind of hinted at it. Look at the axis. We have three equally spaced time points. Last year is just as far away from last week as last week is the current week. Hmm. Hmm. Look at this data. If we were to actually go and get the data and plot them, where we're not collapsing the axes. Personally, I think looks a little more honest and you know is a little misleading i don't know why i'm talking in this high octave but here's the cost of gas just looking at this space let's do another one um so this data is from early in the pandemic we've got uh, five counties with the greatest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases. The chart below represents the most impact counties in the last 15 days. What's wrong with this picture? Look at the, look at the dates. Uh, some of these aren't in the right order. a fun little embedded exercise in the slides that is apparently not working right now. So I'm going to embed Lucy McGowan's. Oh, that's exciting. It, it worked. Okay. We don't have to cut the recording. So here's Lucy McGowan. She's also an assistant professor at Wake Forest. She's in the at department. Hmm. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to embed this. So She's got some great examples of how to remake this plot. So here she has rearranged the data and reproduced the plot, but has done, well, some good things with it. She's ordered it in the correct direction uh, so that it doesn't look like a misleading mess. Ugh, I have thoughts clearly. So anyway, um, there are some really great ways to fix this data. I encourage you to check them out here. Um, but let us go back to our, um, our slides. I'll see you all in a bit. Then you can explore Lucy's stuff on your own. Bye.